All right, Jane, and welcome everyone. And this is the launch of our VILS IT monthly meetings for the school year. Our focus for today is the first months of school, which seems to be fitting at this point in time. Absolutely. Our leaders for today's session are going to be me, myself, Mike Modis, along with Jane and Carla, Steve and Zach. If any questions arise during the session day, please throw them in the chat um, and we will answer them at that time or at the end of the call today. Maybe. For all of our sessions, we will have one digital handout this year. Carla's gonna put that in the chat for you and please open it and notice that it contains all of our links in chronological order that we will use today during our session. We really recommend that you bookmark this because you'll have it available then for future reference. It does have links to many documents that we'll be using during the next few months in our work here in the VILS program. Our session outcomes for today are to provide you the resources to have support for the first 30, 60, and 90 days of school, but also share some resources to maintain a safe and secure tech infrastructure for powerful learning. All righty, thanks Mike for kicking us off. And uh, now we wanna take a look here at our norms and we just wanna make sure that we honor your time. And to do that, we wanna give you voice. That means uh, at times we're gonna ask you to mute and unmute your mic. We at times will also ask you to add information to the chat. And then of course, when we're in groups of large groups of people, um, it's just to be mindful of yourself and others and just be as present as possible. We know that you have such big jobs and and such great work that you're doing and we're glad to have you here with us today. And here we have on our Be Present location and in the chat, um, you'll have a link as well as digital handout number one is going to be our attendance form today. We wanna honor you and uh, be able to make sure and connect with you and see the, who is present with us. So please fill out that form so that we can gather your information. And so thank you so much for being here with us today. And during our time together, we're going to have um, some major topics for the first three months of school. You'll notice we're going to start with that big idea of the six elements of success and sustainability. And then we're going to start to drill down. And then we're going to go into that implementation guides for success, the one-to-one -one demo extension and hotspot guides. And then in each of those guides, you're going to see that there's a 30, 60, 90 that also will help guide you along your way, whether you're an iPad district or whether you're a Chromebook district. We're gonna finish up our session uh, here today with uh, launching into our VILS Academy community where we're going to talk a little bit about that and how that's gonna support us as a group. And so we're gonna kick off with our inclusion activity and I promise those sirens aren't uh, here in the room with us. So that's awesome. But uh, I wanna make sure that uh, our, just share who's in the room, your name, your role, district, give a shout out and, and give something that you're looking forward to for the 22-23 school year. So take a moment, add your information to the chat after you're done with your attendance for the day. And uh, we'll give you just a moment to get yourselves settled in and ready to go. All right. Excellent. Got some folks giving shout outs there. Fantastic. Looking forward to working with your teachers this year. That's right. It's all that trickle down effect. Let's give those teachers and schools that wraparound support so then our students have the support for powerful learning. Absolutely. All right, we have some more Bills coaches with us. Fantastic. Oh, here we go. We got Houston. All right, it's going really fast now. This is great. Thanks so much, everybody. We got Irving in the house. Alhambra, welcome, welcome. So nice to see y'all here and uh, great to see um, where your collaborating partners are around the country. We are gonna be that collaborative group every month getting back together. We have from C6 to C9 here today with us and we just wanna make sure that we stay connected and this is a great way to do it. So thanks for being here with us. We're gonna go ahead and move on to announcements. 
All right. Thanks, Jane. Just a few announcements to get us started for the session today and get us started for the year and a couple of refreshers. And I did see in the chat some new names and I see some new faces on the screen today. And just want to let you all know that we do have some C9 schools with us for the first time this year. And so we'd like to welcome in the South Central region, our new schools in Houston and Tucson. And in the Central region, we have new schools in Jefferson County, Milwaukee, and Cleveland Metropolitan School District. And from the Southeast region, we have Birmingham City Schools, new schools in Broward County, and new schools in the Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Welcome, everyone. So we do have a call scheduled for each month of the school year. And so here's a list of topics that we'll be covering for the next few months. We do really encourage you to attend all of these because we'll always have helpful information and be able to showcase some of the schools in our program and what they've been doing on the various topics that are here. Our meetings are really focused for the IT leaders and the district point of contacts, as well as the school IT point of contacts. We always have tidbits for the coaches and the principals and those student tech team leads. So we welcome all of you to our monthly IT meetings. One thing that is happening right now is the gap order window. And this is your week, your opportunity to place that gap order if you have additional students that have enrolled at your school, or if you have new staff positions added to your faculty rosters. So we have links here that we'll be sharing with you as well. Please click on those, submit your gap order today or this week if you do have growth in either, either of those areas for your staff or your student numbers. Righty, and the great thing is, um, you know, just uh, today, I know Mike, you and I were chatting and just a fresh reminder too, that this is um, for C6 through C9 for the gap orders. And that C6, this is your fall order. This is the one you get for this year to make sure you place those as well. Good point, Jane. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And that actually takes us into a really um, great opportunity for us to see the great things that are happening in um, the school districts across the country with our C9 schools. They're going to be presenting to us at rollout showcases. So if you're a C9 school in a district, uh, then you will have the opportunity to present either on Tuesday, September 27th, for those who had a rollout prior to September 15th, and those on Wednesday, October 12th, in this very meeting in RIT Monthly, you'll be able to present to your colleagues as well about the great things that happened at your rollout. So get in contact with your TPD or TPM. They're gonna be supplying you with the scaffolds and your bills leads in your district will be able to guide you through that as well. All righty, and there are some questions in the chat going, so make sure you take a look there and ask any questions along the way. We wanna make sure your questions are answered. So thanks so much, everyone. We're on to our six elements, Carla. All right, hi everyone. Based on our experience, we've found that our most successful schools and districts have six key elements in place to establish and sustain a culture of powerful learning that leverages technology. So over the course of our IT monthly meetings, we will touch on all of these elements. And as we continue to explore the elements, you'll find that you have additional access to descriptions of each element in the digital handout. So if look at item number five in the digital handout and you will see those descriptions. Handout number six also has um, elements that are aligned to the, um, the digital handout. All right, so for our IT leaders, we'd like you to take a moment to open either the main six element guide from link number five or the examples of the six elements that are linked to number six. And the six elements focused for IT leaders are leadership team, consistent access, family engagement, and equity as a mindset. 
So think about each element and whether or not it includes the leadership team where you, each of you plays a significant role in cross-functional leadership and collaboration, consistent access, supporting device status, things like digital citizenship and the success of school-based IT. Also under consistent access are our student tech teams and the support that they provide. Um, are you focused right now on family engagement, where the IT role is critical to support families and students through rollout and ongoing needs? Or you may be focusing on equity as a mindset, where the main goal is to provide technology access that allows access to tools to support unique home and learning needs for all students. So in this activity, we'd like you to add the number or numbers to the chat for your focus area. So think about these elements again, and which one is your top priority at this time in the first months of school? You know, Carla, as they're thinking about that, one of the things I love to point out is that our everybody's calendars are on a slightly different uh, uh, timetable. Some have just started school in the last week others they've been in for four five six weeks and so everybody can be at a different spot on this right now where their focus is because they do adjust to the season i do believe absolutely and take absolutely. a look there we're seeing numbers coming in too we have some had two numbers you know ruben there you said leadership team and consistent access ah caroline family engagement and equity as a mindset. So you probably already went through rollout and now you're really focused on now, how do we get that going? How do we ensure families and equity is supported? Yeah, fantastic. All right, I'm seeing a lot of um, some ones. So leadership team, see it's districts focusing on the leadership aspect also, um, I see uh, number five, family engagement. Now is a great time to think about family engagement um, if you haven't had your rollout yet, or think about reflect on family engagement if you've completed your rollout. And even Carla, I'm thinking when you said that, it's that whole idea of what's the ongoing supports too. You did roll out, now what's the ongoing for family engagement and that powerful learning? All right, so as we move along, keep these six elements in mind and think about your focus as we go along. And I'm going to turn things over to my colleague, Zach. Thank you, Carla. Uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for being here today. Um, we at VILS realize that we have multiple flavors of our program, so to speak. And uh, at times that can make it challenging to know what information we're sharing applies to your situation. Um, so based on your feedback, we've we've created some new resources called uh, implementation guides. And we feel that these um, can help point to uh, sort more sources of information when you need them, but also provide just a great overview of each of each version of our program. So you see four different implementation guides uh, on this slide. The one-to-one -one program, of course, is the program where each teacher and student receives a device and a data plan. Uh, and so we have a one-to-one -one implementation guide for all schools or in that one-to-one -one program in years one and two. And then we ha also have what we call uh, extension, which really just means years three and four of the one-to-one -one program. We also have an implementation guide for demonstration schools or demo schools. <clears throat> and finally, we have an implementation guide for hotspot schools. We want to jump in and, and take a look and highlight a few things that we think are especially helpful for um, those of you who work with IT. So these implementation guides are geared towards uh, everyone who works in a VILS school or a VILS district. And we'd like to just illustrate a few things. So while I'm talking, uh, if you would, in the digital handout, maybe take a look at uh, number seven, you'll find the links to each of these guides. Uh, and as you're pulling them up, I'd like to just highlight a few things that you may see there um, you may you may find to be helpful. And I'll put that link back in the in the chat if you need it. So we think that IT leads and school-based IT points of contact um, will find it especially helpful to have just some some written explanation of 
of the IT roles. So you also not only see the IT roles, but also the other roles in schools and districts, um, people that you may work uh, closely with to help you see how those apply to your situation and, and who handles which tasks. Uh, there's also some information about uh, professional learning, things like opportunities like this webinar that we're on right now and other support that Vils offers for IT staff. You will find some backstory on what we call data dashboards that will provide information that will uh, offer some insights, we think, into data usage in particular and damages to devices. Uh, you'll also find what we call toolkits and 30, 60, 90, which you'll hear more about in just a few moments. Uh, we also have the links to these webinars. So as you are frantically searching how to uh, register for and join meetings, these are really good uh, places to look for those links to our, our Zoom webinars. Uh, and we also think you, we're going to speak a little bit uh, about this later today, but we also have some information on uh, our LMS uh, called the Bills Academy and the uh, sort of outreach and community and networking um, uh, options that are available there that you'll hear about shortly. With that, I'll hand it over to Steve. Thank you, Zach. And you know, um, I want to um, I want to commend at least uh, many of my colleagues, but one in particular, Jane uh, Miller, as she has really streamlined a lot of the things that we've put together. And just think about that digital handout, like Zach just pasted in, in, in the chat a moment ago. I can remember on some of these calls, it's like, okay, now where's this handout? Where's the slide deck? Where's this and where's that? And think about the one-stop shopping that you now have. And so uh, I just wanted to pause for a moment and kind of recognize that. And then as I look forward, you know, we're going to dive into some of the, the meat on, on some of these items. As, as Zach said, we've got the, we've got the um, various uh, implementation guides, but we're going to take a look right now at our 30, 60, 90 day toolkits. And really what we've tried to do with these is put together some of the common uh, maybe problems, uh, things that we've seen happening, and maybe for you to be preparing for those. And so you can see uh, on the slide, it says our why, our what, and our how, okay? And so we're really trying to identify some of the common issues. Now, I'll throw one of them out there. How about the dreaded PUK code? For those of you who are very familiar with that. For those who may be not familiar, this could be some, some new information for you. But what we've tried to do is put in some of those issues. When students start, I can remember the first student brought me an iPad that said it needs a PUK code to unlock it. And I was like, I don't even know what a PUK code is. You know, somebody help me. And I can remember reaching out to a couple of my colleagues on this side, Betty and Mike in particular, and saying, hey, what does this mean? And they're like, oh, that's a simple thing. And we went into the fix. So the idea today is we want you to have access to these. So I see the question uh, in the chat right now, where are they? <laughs> so I'll point out on the bottom of this slide in our digital handout uh, that Zach dropped in a minute ago. If you look at items eight and nine, it'll talk about these uh, these toolkits. And really we, we kind of see them in two versions. Um, many of the, the, the problems are, or maybe the symptoms that we see may be similar, whether you're on a Chromebook or whether you're an, on an iPad but there are some that are maybe specific or unique to that platform. So because of that, you're gonna see a lot of overlap in the 30, 60, 90, but there are definitely some unique items. So um, what we've tried to do in here is number one, identify some of these issues, the problems you may be seeing, and then maybe some possible solutions or how to deal with those. So if you've had a, a moment to look at those, those uh, uh, 30, 60, 90 guides, what we're going to now do is kind of have a have a, a, a few minutes of reflection. Uh, you can see uh, Jane has advanced to the slide here for us, has a QR code. And um, you can go to that QR code. It's going to take you to a Menti meter. And in that Menti, it's going to ask you to identify um, maybe your top two. You may have none or you may have six, but let's let's look at maybe what your top two are 
and we're going to kind of collect those in our in our uh, menti, and then we're going to kind of talk through maybe what some of the top pain points are that we're seeing for people. So some of them you're going to see right off. That's the ones we've identified as your first 30 days. And then a little further into it, you may experience more. And then finally, three months in, some of the items you're going you're gonna to be seeing. So, um, Jane, I don't know. Well, everybody's got the digital handout by now, so they don't need the slide. But I was going to say, if you could click on the link to go to the Minty. Uh, and I would just ask if some of you would go ahead and start. Uh, uh, oh, there you go. I just have to see the screen large enough in my old eyes here to see. <laughs> That's okay. It's right here for y'all. So yeah. you can see here on the Menti, we're going to have you rank them. Let's see who. what are all of our top two. Yeah. So feel free to go ahead and start ranking those. And then when you click enter, we'll see the results. Yeah. And as we give you all a few minutes to start dropping those in, I, I, I love Mike's comment in here, right? Think about your student tech teams. Many of you if you're a, a cohort nine, you may be, we're just forming our tech teams right now. What are we going to have them do? Uh, you can use these 30, 60, 90 guides as things to automatically look at some content that you might be working with your student tech teams to solve if it's, if it's within their realm. Because, um, you know, I, I'm a firm believer of many hands make light work. And so if you've got, say, 10 or 20 or I don't know how many students you would have on your tech team been out there embedded in, in periods or in a, a class, but they once they're skilled, they can help out with a lot of these issues. And so I do see, look, 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 look. I start seeing power adapters, warranty repairs, accidental damage, uh, connecting to app on Wi-Fi, data plans. Uh, not all students received a device yet. Parents not signing the paperwork. I think six and seven may be related, right? Uh, I'm actually surprised that the PUK and SIM cards are down to number eight. Usually by now, I feel like that's number one. That's why I always use that as my leading example. But uh, yeah, and so then nine and 10 are tailing off a bit about the teachers and the students finding ways to download. Uh, so yeah, I guess nine and 10 are all about apps at this point, right? So maybe they haven't gotten into it. So let me continue to cast your votes if you've not done so, but as you do, I'll, I'll start with a few, a few of the items. So number one, the power adapters, missing or damaged. Those are always um, fun topics of conversation, the power adapters. So again, you can see they'll, they may function differently if you're on a Chromebook from an iPad, but in the end, in the big picture, it's almost the same issue. The device has to charge the battery. And what do you do if they don't have them? So um, I will give you, um, you know, there are um, the, if you look at the USB-C adapters that are available for the Chromebooks, um, they tend to be, there's nothing specific about a Samsung versus a CTL versus many of the other uh, adapters. My one caution is always, what is the, uh, uh, how many uh, amps uh, is that providing? You know, if it's a two amp or a five, or how many watts, I guess a five watt power supply or, or so forth. So. That's always one thing to keep in mind. Look at your originals because we do have so many years, many times there's a variation in the power supplies. And I know my, my former district, we were iPads at the time. And so uh, I, my running um, commentary for folks in my district was always, there's, there's two things you should, you should never get at a gas station, right? And that was sushi and power supplies for your iPad. Uh, that they always tend to be, uh, they say, well, you can get it for $5 at the gas station, but many times those are not, uh, they're not adequate. So we always recommend whether it's a Chromebook or an iPad to look at some sort of an OEM equivalent device. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Samsung or a CTL or even an Apple branded charger as long as they meet those OEM specs. So that's kind of one thing. Where do you get the adapters? But then the other thing I think has to do with your behaviors and what you what you talk about with your students. I know one of the things many times people want to 
keep a package together. I got my Chromebook and my power supply. I got my iPad and my power supply. They really, if they're charging, going back to your behaviors, if you think about the students charging at home at night, they really have no reason to bring those power supplies to school. Therefore, they don't get lost or they don't get as damaged. If they're always in a central place in the home, many times that will facilitate a lot of the, uh, reducing a lot of the loss, the damage, all of those issues. So just thinking that's, that's kind of some of the thinking I would want to look. It's not just getting a replacement and not just um, do we pay for it? Do they pay for it? All of those issues. Really, I want to look at the underlying. What can we do to, to reduce the number that we're looking for? And, and so Steve, then, we, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, one more little tidbit that I know has come up this week with a couple of my districts and, uh, and last week as well is the discount um, sites that Bills has available for, for our schools to be able to purchase additional adapters um, and power sources. And so yeah. with that, um, just contact your TPD or TPM and they're happy to get you that document as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And then, you know, the, I say number two and number three, they, they are all about repairs. Uh, so warranty obviously is only for the first year of the device. So if you're in year two of this and you're listing warranty repair, realize that's not really applicable to you. But the warranty repair really goes to either CT. At this point, it's either going to be CTL or Apple. And uh, they're going to be covered for one year uh, for manufacturer's defects. If it's anything else, that would fall under the accidental damage, which was our number two on the list. Whether it's a cracked screen or keys, you might make an argument maybe sometimes for keys and keyboards uh, popping off. But for the most part, it's accidental damage. Uh, and so working through our vendors, uh, I know for most of you now we've streamlined our repairs through AGI. So most of our accidental damage, not everybody, but most of you will now be using AGI for the accidental damage. And it's much more streamlined, much more responsive process. So I hope that experience turns out much better for you as we go forward. So anyway, I've, I've highlighted actually the top three, but uh, anything else uh, that, that uh, feels like you really wanna jump in on or speak to? Uh, otherwise, I will say many of these things really are uh, uh, documented and listed in our in our 30, 60, 90 guides. And if there's things that you don't feel are covered, as Jane said earlier, we've got support for you. We've got our technical project managers and our technical project directors. They're working with you on the IT side of things uh, that can help point you in the right direction for many of these. And I know just using the accidental damage one, for example, um, some of the districts we've got are maybe still trying to file things under the old uh, plans and just realizing that we've, for many of you, we've made a switch over the course from last year to this year, and you may not realize those new steps with AGI. So we've got all of that there, and just be sure to reach out to the team if, if we can help beyond the 30, 60, 90 guides, all right? Absolutely, so, and one more yeah. little tidbit about this slide too is, uh, they are the uh, first 30 and 60. So you can yeah. even gauge where you are in that 30 and 60 by the different types of pain points that you're having. So go through that list of the 30, 60, and then you're gonna start to see what is in that 90 days? What do I need to be looking towards and forward to? Yeah. And point. then also look at those resources um, of our IT monthly meetings coming up um, to be able to support you too. You kind of read my mind on that one, Jane. I was getting ready to say that uh, the beauty of having a community like we have here, some of you are stepping into this maybe for the first time and you're very unsure. Some of you like, you know what, we've done this for years. We've got this. And I love the community because many times folks will reach out and somebody else on the call will say, oh, we dealt with that already. We did it this way. And they can share that knowledge. And that kind of is a is a plug too for our um, you know our learning management system that we've got. You're going to see us shortly. I'll give you a little teaser. We're going to have some some uh, things ahead, maybe on community that we can share uh, across across districts in. So now that does lead me though to my my next piece here. My next slide really is about communication. And so I know many times in schools folks can feel like they're in isolation, you know, 
Uh, if I'm a IT person at a school and maybe I don't have regular district level meetings or I don't have a chance to jump on these calls or watch the recordings, you're like, I've got all these problems and all these, you know, how do I get my, my uh, crack screens fixed? Or the kids lost or re removed the SIM card and I've forgotten what I'm supposed to do. Um, one of the things I, I love to share is, is, is past experiences with other districts and, and some of my own experience is kind of working on a plan internally. Think about, you know, right now, as Jane said, we've got a monthly schedule of times that we're going to come together and we're going to communicate some of our things with you all. But then you in turn probably need to do some of those internally. You think about when the onboarding session were. Many times when you were onboarded, we talked about, hey, it's a great idea for you all to set aside a regular time as a district to meet or as an IT team to meet or as coaches to meet, some kind of role group. And then to share, just like we did here with our mentee exercise, with uh, sharing what are our pain points or our issues or our concerns or problems, we can do that internally in the district. And when one school is seeing an issue, um, maybe someone else has already dealt with that. Or <clears throat> maybe you're the IT lead for the district and you're on this call and you realize you just heard about gap orders, but then the schools may not be here or present or represented and they don't know about it. And a month or two from now, they might reach out to one of our technical project directors and say, you know what, we're about 20 devices short. Is there any way we can get a replacement device? And so I use those as examples to say, as you think about your communication process internally, those are the kind of things that you can share. Now, my district, when I before I uh, retired, we met every Friday morning. And we had a uh, uh, kind of a roll call on Zoom and folks would come in, principals, coaches, IT, and we would talk about what are the things for the week? What are the issues we're seeing? What are the reports that need to be submitted? Where are we on our planning? All of those kinds of things. I think those are great points for information sharing internally. I also worked with a district uh, this last year, I remember, that had like a running newsletter that they would meet and they would post all their material to it. And then if a coach or a principal or an IT person couldn't make the call, they had that documented newsletter they put out that just everything they talked about. So all of those are strategies, I think, that can work. So I'm going to ask you, how is it that you're sharing these things? Out? How are you meeting? And if you would, maybe just a couple of those ideas, hopefully I've talked through and given you enough thoughts. Drop a few of those in the chat for me, if you would. Um, just maybe you're already meeting or maybe you're like you know as steve's talking about this i realize we're not really doing that yet so this is what my plans will be i'll, I'll let you be uh, forward looking and how you're going to deal with that but if you would just drop some of those in the chat for us please somebody's gonna be first come on i know you're, you're all typing so thoroughly it just takes a minute or two to give you that time right I think you're going to have an unintended waterfall. It happened on our previous one, too. They're just very thoughtful about the responses, that's for sure. <laughs> that's great. But I really do appreciate your description, Steve, of the communication, because that was part of our top um, sustainability um, <clears throat> tips that came yeah. through our discussions over the years, as well as research saying communication is really key. What is your strategy? Absolutely. Yeah. And so I just, I want to encourage you just to think of some way of sharing out a meeting as a community internally. Uh, I know that a couple of the districts that I worked with, yes, we would have a, a, a bi-weekly IT sync. And I know the professional earnings, I would meet with the coaches and the principals regularly. But a couple of districts I worked with actually sent me an invite to sit in on theirs. And I got to sit out there. Uh, they, Yeah, you call it a monthly huddle there. Uh, well, and I love that. And that's exactly what they would do. They would have their huddle and they would invite me. And many times I would just sit there and get to hear what's going on. And, you know, we, we lay out prescriptively all the things that we think you need to be doing and working yeah. on. And then... Yeah. Um, we don't always pick up on what's really happening. So being able to participate is wonderful. So yeah, yeah, um, I agree. At least I love that. It sounds like somebody's unmuting. Is somebody wanting to jump in and speak? 
Uh, it might just be me, Steve. So, oh, okay. I think, Sorry, I think really, no, 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 that's all good. Um, I think what I'm noticing here too is the idea that there are some internal IT specific team meetings where you need to resolve. And then I'm seeing some others adding in that, you know, you're there having the IT then pull in the teaching and learning side and then the school side and then resolve and then work together and communicate. So it's a little combination of both, which is really good. It's healthy to have kind of talk in your, your huddles, like you're saying, of maybe the IT only, and then come back together with everyone with TNL and IT, and then being able to blend that together in those cross-functional partnerships to, for success. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was scrolling back up. I see uh, Javon putting in, they do a Microsoft Teams meeting uh, weekly. So those are the kinds of things I'm talking about. There's not a, a right way to do it, but I know the wrong way to do it is not to have it, right? So build in some sort of communication. It always seems to be where most of our breakdowns occur is when there's not open and frequent communications. So yeah, with that, um, Jane, I'll, I'll pass it back to you. Okay, excellent. Well, I sure do appreciate the idea that you're talking about group chats, you're talking about emails, you're talking about newsletters. That really ties in really well. Remember, we've gone from the big picture of the six elements of success. We've gone into the implementation guide that then supports reaching those six elements of success for sustainability. Then in the implementation guide, we went to the toolkits. Now you're talking about, now how are we communicating our needs and working together to get it done? And that's where the VILS community comes to play. Um, we have a collaborative online space, as you know. We had the VILS Academy previously on a different platform. It's evolved um, so that we have greater access to each other and be able to support one another throughout our um, time together and for you to bring it back to your home communities as well. And so with that, um, we have, I'm going to go to the next slide an opportunity that we're gonna start sharing through what's called the IT community forums. Now there is the overall bills community where you're already potentially maybe getting a question of the week or um, the Thursday three and you're getting some resources. Well, we're gonna have one specific to the IT community as well. So one day we'll have a spotlight, one day we'll have a question and then we'll just have some reminders on meetings too. But the really great thing is that we don't want you going out and using multiple, multiple tools. We want to bring these discussions like the great thoughts you had here in the chat, and we wanna bring it into the Bills Community Forum. That means that our next October meeting, we're gonna start taking this chat and taking it into the actual forum itself so that we then have an archive for the bigger group to enjoy and appreciate and learn from each other as well, not just in an isolated chat, just in our Zoom. So this is what <clears throat> the IT community forum will be. <clears throat> and just notice here that um, you have that Okta Bills Launchpad. So Bills Launchpad is powered by what's called Okta on the back end. And so with that, in your digital handout number 11, you'll see I put a link there for Okta for you for the launch pad. Now, for those of you who've been in it, awesome. For those of you who haven't, and you're not sure what this Okta Vils launch pad is, you might have something in your spam mail. Maybe you haven't got it yet. We don't know, but we want to help you. So if you don't have access to the Vils launch pad and Okta yet, please put your name in the chat. Get connected with your TPD, TPM. Um, make sure that you connect and get connected with it because we're going to start launching out. These calendar invites for our monthly meetings are not going to go into your calendar. We want to minimize the emails that you get. You need to go into your implementation guide and register. Well, I'll be placing a link in there for you saying, hey, it's time to register for your monthly meeting. And then you'll be able to have that link. So you'll want to get in there so that those notifications come to you so that you just have those friendly reminders along the way. So if we go in through the Okta, we go into Vils Academy, and then notice there to the right is our IT community. 
There's going to be a home button on the left hand side when you enter the actual Bills Academy and you're going to click that and it's going to highlight and it's going to say have a little button there that says Verizon Innovative Learning. And then next to it, it's going to say the IT community. And with that, um, you'll be click there and then that will be where our threads are going to be located. Now, when you go in there, you're going to see that the center screen doesn't probably have anything in it, and that's okay because we, we are in the midst of creating additional professional learning for you that would go there. So we're really gonna be focused on that community chat, the community forum, and sharing ideas. So if you do, again, um, what need to do, you know, get connected into the Okta Launchpad, uh, make sure that you contact your TPD or TPM and then also go ahead and put your name in the chat. We're happy to um, be of support too. All righty. Well, that's just a perfect timing for us to now take you into the next section. So I can get you just a moment to kind of take a breath and while we move into the final steps for today. All right. Yeah, that was a lot, Jane. And I really want to- That was. To yep. I commend you for putting together the digital handouts because um, it's great to have all of these resources in one place for future reference and for sharing as well within our school and our district teams. So again, before you leave today, make sure you have that link to that digital handout that was shared earlier and we can reshare that if you need that. Also want to point you to our IT bootcamp handout because we shared lots of resources for school techs that they could find helpful at those webinars this summer. And then looking ahead, we have our October monthly meeting on October 12th, and we'd love to see you all there for that. And at that point, we're gonna talk about the maintenance and inventory and the rollout showcase part two information. And the registration link will be shared and that should be on the digital handout, Jane, as well. Absolutely, it's right all there right. and it's that yeah, last one. Excellent. So at this time, that concludes our call for today. You are welcome to stay on and chat with us or drop off because we know Many of you are busy as well. It is middle of a school day, so we fully understand that. So thank you. We appreciate your time, and we'll see you next time.